With the rise in globalization of international basketball, Team USA faces the most important challenge in its history. The decades of dominance in international tournaments are part of the past. Team USA has had really poor performances in the last two World Cups, finishing 7th and 4th respectively. And the Federation is really scared that this equality between Team USA and the rest of the international powerhouses will become clearer and clearer as time goes by. But there's a different tournament. There's an international tournament that's worth more than any other. In basketball, the Olympic gold medal means more than anything else. Since 1992, the United States has won the Olympic gold medal in seven of the last eight editions. Every four years, there's no room for games, no room for experiments. The best players in the country unite to prove that their superiority still exists in the moments of truth. But is this enough? Or rather, will this be enough to take the gold at the next Olympic Games in Paris? Or has the era of Team USA's reign come to an end? Since 1956 and up to 2018, there have been 63 NBA MVP awards. Of those, 59 have been won by American players. Only Hakeem Olajuwon, Steve Nash twice, and Dirk Nowitzki have been able to lift this trophy as international players. However, since 2019, there has not been a single American who has been named regular season MVP. Not one. Giannis Antetokounmpo, Nikola Jokic, and Joel Embiid have hogged the trophy for six seasons. There's no doubt that the globalization of basketball has been the cause for the rest of the countries to improve a lot in their ability to develop new athletes. Not only the MVPs, but many of the players that any fan would consider as elite superstars in the NBA are international. Something that has undoubtedly caused the rest of the national teams to see potential to beat Team USA. No, it's not utopia anymore. Teams like France, who have just placed two top prospects at the top of the draft two years in a row, and who can field a roster made up almost entirely of players in the best league in the world. Not only do they have incredible young talents like Victor Wembanyama, Bilal Koulibaly, or future team members Alexander Saar or Zachary Risache, but they also have players with great NBA experience, veterans like Nico Batum, Evan Fournier, or Rudy Gobert. Not to mention the always tough European teams, Nikola Jokic's Serbia, Giannis Antetokounmpo's Greece, Luka Doncic's Slovenia, or the surprising Germany of Franz Wagner. And for some reason, the best FIBA player in the world, Dennis Schroeder. Anyone can pull off the surprise. Or like Canada, who has a stacked roster that every year seems better than the last. Their depth at perimeter players is unheard of for a team other than Team USA. Shea Gilgis Alexander, Jamal Murray, RJ Barrett, Andrew Nembard, Andrew Wiggins, Nikhil Alexander Walker, Lou Dort, Dylan Brooks. The fact that Canada beat Team USA in the last World Cup was not a fluke, it was not an anomaly. That roster is capable of competing, position for position, with practically any team that the United States is capable of producing. Or well, to be honest, maybe not yet. The reason is simple. The roster that Steve Kerr has assembled this year can be considered one of the best in history. Name for name, it's hard to think that a team could be better. LeBron James, Stephen Curry, Kevin Durant, or Anthony Davis are or have been authentic superstars of the elite level. Completely legendary players who have led their generation in the NBA. Others like Jason Tatum, Joel Embiid, or Devin Booker are established superstars who still have a long career ahead of them. But in addition, players like Anthony Edwards, Tyrese Halliburton, or Bam Adebayo represent the next generation that will take over from the unmatched current crop. As if that were not enough, they also have the best role player in the league in Drew Holiday. The best perimeter defender in the league, who has also proven to be a natural born winner. Honestly, I can't think of anything they're missing. This group of 12 players could compete toe-to-toe -to -toe with a combined team from the rest of the world. 
Do you think I'm crazy? Tell me which starting five could compete with Steph, Ant-Man, LeBron, KD, and Embiid. We're talking about practically the best players of their generation. And even though some of them may be past their prime, they're still considered some of the absolute elites among the entire NBA. And that brings me to my next question. Is this the best Team USA ever? Is it better than the 92 Dream Team? Is it better than the 2008 Redeem Team? Well, let's take a look at the numbers. Let's start with the most recent. A lot of people talk about the 2008 Redeem Team being one of the best rosters ever. I mean, they had Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, Dwight Howard, Carmelo Anthony. But to be honest, that team was incredibly young. In fact, there was only one player over the age of 30, and that was Jason Kidd. The point is that many of these players, despite being young and talented, still didn't know how to win. In 2008, only Kobe, Wade, and Tayshaun Prince knew what it felt like to win an NBA championship. Not only that, but the only player on that roster who knew what it was like to be a regular season MVP was Kobe Bryant, who had won it for the first time just a few months earlier. And the only one who had won a finals MVP was D. Wade, when he won with the Heat in 2006. Despite the hype of the documentary, no. The Redeem team is in no universe better than the roster that Steve Kerr is going to take to France. And what about the Dream Team? That team of superheroes that went to the 1992 Barcelona Olympics and charmed everyone with their aura and their unparalleled style. A completely stacked roster that went down in history as the best group of players ever formed. Well, this is a serious rival. Eight of the top 50 scorers in history were on that roster. Not only that, but 10 of those chosen as the 50 best players in history in 2017 were on the team. Between all the players, they totaled 15 MVPs. And after their retirement, all the players who were part of that team totaled 23 championship rings. Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Karl Malone, John Stockton, Charles Barkley, David Robinson, Patrick Ewing, Clyde Drexler. The average talent they had at every position was unheard of. But how does that team compare to this year's Team USA, dubbed the Redeem Team 2.0? Let's check it out. These are the numbers of the players on the roster at this point in their career, keeping in mind that many have many years left to go. LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Stephen Curry, and Joel Embiid combined for eight MVP trophies. Although with players like Anthony Edwards on the roster, we can expect that number to increase. Between LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, and Kawhi Leonard, they combined for another nine finals MVPs. In addition, players like Drew Holiday or Anthony Davis know what it means to be a key part of the winning team. In fact, among all the members of Redeem Team 2.0, they have 16 championship rings, a figure that should increase even more during the next decade. As for the scoring numbers, there are only three players on the roster that today are in the top 50 all-time, those being LeBron, KD, and Steph. However, if Anthony Davis, Joel Embiid, Jason Tatum, Devin Booker, and Anthony Edwards continue playing like they've been, they should be able to make it during their careers. That would equal the number of eight that the Dream Team had. Finally, five players from Kerr's roster appear on the list of the top 75 players in history that the NBA published for its 75th anniversary in 2022. LeBron, Durant, Steph, Kawhi, and Anthony Davis. However, any player on the current roster could end up making this list in the future if the collective successes accompany him. All except one. Maybe Drew Holiday won't be able to make the cut, but have you noticed? Okay, the numbers show that the 1992 Dream Team is superior, but you have to look at the situation with perspective. We're comparing the careers of a group of players already retired with the careers of a group of players who, on average, still have a few years of career ahead of them. It's an unfair comparison. In fact, it'll be fair to compare the two teams when the entire current generation is retired. However, the quality of this new version of the Redeem team is unprecedented. 
for the simple fact of being the only one that perhaps name for name can be compared to the best team ever assembled. Now, the 92 Dream Team managed to win every game of the tournament with an average margin of victory of 43.8 points. And if international basketball has taught us anything, it's that this is impossible today. However, the most conservative expectations about this team say that they have to win absolutely every game with ease. In the last dance of a golden generation, I don't just think that they'll do it, but deep down, I know they will. Olympic gold, it's just a matter of time, and then the US will be able to say that they are world champions.